It's time for part three then. Um, so we've got all the electrical side of things sorted in the last video. Um, we're happy with all of that. We're going to have a bit of a break from the norm now. We're going to go into 3D design of an enclosure to put our hybrid Ed Tracker in. Um, obviously we've got a we don't really just want a plain box because we've got a three point model to hold you know perfectly still in space um, on our head. So we're going to need something a little bit more complex than a box. Um, so we're going to design our own one and then in the next video we'll show that, that being 3D printed. Um, some people will be saying well this is all a bit overkill isn't it, you know you could make a 3D point model and stick it on with, a, with some coat hanger wire and some blue tack and stuff and that's absolutely true, you could. Um, this whole series of videos is kind of uh, um, uh, it's kind of like an exploratory um, journey, if you like. Yeah, it's it's think of it as a learning exercise for you and for me. You know, it's not necessarily going to make absolute logical sense whether you would do it this way. It's just showing you some techniques and tools and stuff like that. Yeah. So um, we're going to 3D design. We're going to use a package that I've been into for a few years now. It's called OnShape. It's online. It's a cloud-based. Um, 3D design um, application, run it in your browser, um, very powerful and free. Um, I say free, you you get a limit to the amount of document storage you have in it um, uh, with, to keep your, your 3D designs private, beyond which you have to pay. Or, you can, as if you're happy to make your 3D models publicly viewable in Onshape, then there's no limit. So you can have as many publicly viewable 3D documents as you like, completely for free. Functionality is not limited between the paid version and the free version. You get full feature-rich uh, parametric modeling um, application. So very good. I've been using it, for, like I say, for a few years now. I haven't found anything that I can't do in it yet. Um, we are, I suppose I should caveat this, but you know, I'm not formally trained in it in any way. I'm not a, a, a 3D design engineer or draftsman or, a, you know, CAD modeler or anything like that. Um, I've just picked it up as we go along. So I might get some terminology wrong. The techniques I use may be not the most ideal. Um, but, you know, for, for home use, I'm sure you'll get the idea. Um, hey, sue me if you don't like it. Um, yeah, so... Um, Let's start with before we put any mouse, you know, mouse to screen. I always have to think a little bit about what we're doing. I've got an idea in my mind of, of what this this enclosure is going to look like. It's going to look like this. That's that's my idea. Something in the middle here to put the uh, the PCB in, and then some arms extending out that are going to hold our point model in a controlled you know pattern. That's the idea. With that, then you have to think about how you're going to manufacture it. So you can't fall into the trap of just diving in and designing something without thinking and having a knowledge of how it's going to be produced. Um, there be dragons. You know, there's lots of ways of making this thing. You know, I know, I know we're going to 3D print it, but you know, you could, you could fold it out of steel and weld it and assemble it together. You could mill it out of a block of plastic or metal or something like that, you know. And all those manufacturing processes have got uh, different capabilities and if you don't design with your target um, process in mind you could end up with something that's that's just can't be made yeah it's not a case of design it I'll just throw it over the fence to somebody else who'll worry about making it you have to think right at the start about the final um, production um, so with 3d printing then we have to just be conscious of how the process works yeah, you've probably seen this you start at the bottom and it, it basically prints the, the material layer by layer, builds it up um, in, a, in a, a kind of a thermoplastic. Um, the limitations there are that if you've got any overhangs in your design, the printer can't just print in thin air. Yeah? It has to build up um, and print onto previously uh, deposited material. So if you want to print something that's hanging over, it's, uh, it's, it's difficult. But it's not impossible. You use a feature called supports, you know, where, where the, the printer will print a thin throwaway structure underneath that overhang to, to hold the final piece. And then when it's all finished, you take it off and you, from your screensaver kicking in, you take it off and you snap away that, that uh, disposable part and, and you're left with what you what you're after. So it is possible, but you know, you have to be conscious of, of not printing in thin air, basically. Right then. Um, so with that in mind, Let's get um, on shape fired up. 
and we shall go through it. One thing I will say, I'm going to, this isn't going to be like a formal training in, in on shape. I'm not going to go through every feature of it. I'm not going to sit and take time going through every uh, click and action. I'll try and summarize it, but um, you know, to go over it in detail would be a very long video, and I don't want this to be, turn into that. If there's enough interest or demand that people want to see uh, some techniques and, and go through, through on shape a bit more clinically and, and kind of have a, a tutorial in it, Comment down there, and you know we could always do that in a separate stream of videos if need be. But yeah, we're going to kind of try and get through this fairly quickly, but uh, but learn something on the way. Okay, right. Let's get on shape, fired up, and we shall start the process. Okay, so you're going to get yourself over to cad.onshape.com here, cad.onshape.com. Um, sign up for an account, like I said, that's all free. You do the whole registration process business, and then you can start creating your um, your design. Uh, here's a list of all of my designs that I've got up on there. Um, fairly straightforward. We click create to create a new one. Give it a name, uh, and this is where you know choose public, so you don't. It doesn't go towards your quota, your limit, and then you can uh, create as many of those as you want and it'll set up a blank workspace for you. There's a few little tasks that uh, I like to do right up front before I forget. So one of the first things you want to do is go up to this little properties icon up here and set the workspace units because it defaults to inches and um, I prefer to work in millimeters myself. So you can change the default unit to millimeters if you want to stay with inches you can leave it like that. Um, mass is pounds so I'm going to change that to grams don't quite need that level of accuracy. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, that's the key thing to always remember. Right. Now, just having a look here, then we'll just explain what we've got. So in the middle here, obviously, the main bulk of the uh, the screen is taken up by the workspace, which you can click and drag into kind of group select stuff when you've created something. Right mouse button uh, and drag rotates. Um, middle mouse button hold and drag kind of moves, translates up, down, left, right, and then you can roll your mouse wheel to zoom in and out on the uh, the spot where the cursor is. Yeah, and you can always click on this um, block in the top corner to reset to any of these views. So you click front and you can jump to the front view, top. You can even click the corners and get some isometric views as well. And there's some preset views here as well, so you can kind of jump to those if you wish. Um, I'm going to switch to top. Uh, on the left here we've got um, some features and then this is where all of your um, I don't know what the technical term for them is, the operations that you create on your model build up down this, this left hand side here. Um, this is part of how most parametric uh, modeling systems work. So you you set a sequence of instructions up and each one modifies on the, the previous instruction. And so, you, and that means you can go back and, and change stuff. Um, you can move stuff around, pull operations out, add new ones in. Um, it's very flexible, and your design just changes from that point forward. Um, you'll see; all become very obvious. And then, of course, across the top, we've got our main set of tools and all of these. I am not going to go over all of these, but um, the main ones we're probably going to be using are Sketch. Everything kind of starts from a sketch, really, which is a, a you know a two D drawing, which we then can you know extrude into a, a 3D part. Uh, the first icon here is your extrude, we'll definitely be using that. Uh, we'll probably be using one of these, probably um, sweep to do some curved stuff. Fillets, very useful, so we'll probably be doing that just to round off edges. Um, drill holes, this is your hole tool. Mirror, so there's a, you can create half a model and then mirror it so you've got an exact replica kind of boolean operations here so add two parts together to create one split parts move parts so transform them which is twist them move them laterally up down scale them up and down and so on and so forth um, that's probably the bulk of what we'll be using to be honest so uh, let's get started what we're going to do is we're going to um, start with a sketch now what I'm going to do is we're going to start off with the PCB Obviously, um, I've got the lucky position of having designed the PCB. I've got a DXF file of the outline of it. So I'm just going to go and bring that in using the uh, little plus sign down here, the import feature. 
and we want uh, where is it DXF head tracker DIY version 3 DXF there we go so that comes in and now we should have down on the bottom here all the files that make up your project kind of thing you should have a oh okay the scale is a bit off uh, you probably can't see that because that's blue on black which is not very useful but yeah I've got the outline of the board there so if we come back to our part studio we're going to create a new drawer a sketch so we're going to click sketch and you have to choose which plane you want to work on um, X Y or Z so we're going to click this top plane here so we're going to sketch from the top down uh, and then I'm going to bring in that DXF file which I think is a right click is it Oh no, no, it's up on the top, isn't it? There it is, DXF. So click DXF. Um, there's our DXF file that we brought into our project. So I'm going to bring that in. And yeah, okay, the scale's a bit off. Okay. Um, so we're going to just rescale this, this DXF drawing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this dimension tool here. This is where we define dimensions. Now I know that the board is 29 mil from the top to bottom edge yeah so I'm going to click that dimension tool and it's going to put the value in that it currently is which is way too big if I type 29 29 mil it scales the entire drawing down so now we know we've got an accurate representation of that of that PCB proper scale okay um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating a the main box that this is going to go into and then we're going to create a cavity inside it for the for the module to kind of go in and then we'll do some arms off the side and the back kind of thing we do want to set those um, those um, 3d model points in space as well uh, let's do that first so uh, back on our sketch edit the sketch so once you're in sketch mode you get a different set of tools at the top here yeah, for lines, corner rectangles, boxes, circles, ellipses, arcs, um, other kind of polygons, five, six, whatever sides you want, uh, points, you can put text on there, what's this, uh, I never used that, uh, you can decide whether you're creating construction lines, so you can t toggle this toggle this on to do lines which are just there for informational purposes, you can round edges, snip lines, we'll kind of stumble across all of these as we go along but on the end here are all the constraints and these are a key point of um, parametric modeling um, and design so we'll come to those for a definite, what we're going to do is I'm just going to set up our point model now I know I'm going to need, and this is how you get into the idea of working here, so I know I'm going to need a point over here, so I'm going to stick there a point I'm going to need a point over there and I'm going to need a point down here and I know that I haven't done anything around positioning those at all it doesn't matter because that's what we're going to set now so we get, we know that these two points for example have got to be um, horizontal to one another horizontal in the sense of as we're looking at this like uh, right now so I can put a constraint on here horizontal and on shape will enforce that these two points are always horizontal to one another so if I move the one the other one moves with it see okay that constraint by itself isn't enough we want this rear point to always be in the center of our model I'm going to use the, the center point of the whole drawing uh, and just align to that so now I'm going to set a constraint between these two points that I've chosen and you can see there's a little two by the cursor to show I've selected two things uh, I'm going to say vertical Again, this is not vertical in the 3D model sense, this is vertical as we are looking at this 2D drawing. So now, that line, that point, will always stay in line with the center of the model. Right then, now I'm going to constrain that this point is, well, not a constraint really, it's a measurement. I'm going to constrain that it's always, uh, what did we want? I'm going to go 60 mil. This is really kind of up to you. You can change this in uh, in the software like FaceTrack, and IR, and OpenTrack. You can set this to whatever you want it to be. But uh, I'm going to set these so that they are 60 mil apart from the center line. Um, and then I want the overall distance between those and the back point. Well, that's a pretty good guess actually. I want those to be 100 mil. So I'm going to put 100 mil in there. <coughs> 
Good. Okay, so we've got our point model constrained in the um, in this plane at least. Obviously, we've not set the height on this, but we'll do that later. Um, so now we know that those should all. Ah, and what we want to do is we just want to constrain it to uh, to the part really. How far do we want those? I think if we have if we have this back back one 60 mil from the center that'll do as long as it's as long as we define it it doesn't like I said you can alter the relationship of these points in your software to match so if you don't want 60 mil uh, or 120 mil wide and you don't want 100 mil front to back that's fine you can change that um, that's just what I'm going for okay um, next thing I'm going to do is a, a, a trick for 3d printing really um, it's a, a kind of a a habit I get into. I'm going to just come out of the sketch. I'm going to click this green tick to say we've finished editing the sketch, and I'm just going to create a variable here. So this is um, I like to create a <laughs> a variable called fudge factor or FF or something like that um, because with 3D printing things aren't always that accurate. Sometimes you need to change your model afterwards, and you make need to make um, um, clearances slightly bigger or smaller. And to go around and change every single portion of your model that's that's um, affected is going to be quite laborious. So what we're going to do is we're going to reference a variable in our future design work. And if we ever want to change the, uh, the clearances for any of the 3D printed faces that have got to take take the circuit board in, for example, uh, so where there is like an interference fit, then we can just change this fudge factor. Uh, I'm going to put it at well, I'm going to put it at I'm going to put it at a mil. Yeah, let's go for a mil. It's just a variable. I'm going to put it as one. I'm going to move that up above my sketch. This is um, order specific, yeah? So the items in this menu on the left work from top down. This line represents where you currently are in your editing, and you can move this design, this rollback bar, as they call it, up and down if you want to. So I want my fudge factor variable right at the top, and then uh, we can go to our sketch. So I'm going to right click sketch and edit again. Okay, we're back into sketch editing mode. Right then, so one thing I want to do is I want to, you see these are all lines are all blue. Um, this means they're unconstrained, which means they can kind of, they're not held in position relative to one another. The, so if I click and drag one of them, look, it's very strange things start to happen. Uh, Control Z just undoes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a, a a fixed constraint on all of these points in this this PCB design here. So I'm just going to group select them all, uh, and then there's a uh, where is it? Is it that one? Fix. There we go. So one of these constraints is fix, and that just says right, lock these all in concrete. I don't want them moving. Uh, relative to one another yeah so now they're all fixed and you notice the lines go black which means they're fully constrained which is good so blue is a blue lines or components mean there's a there's a vagueness to them and they could end up being moved and that might be your intention um, if they're you know if they've got to be in relation to another part of your design that's fine but uh, but I'd rather that this was all fixed so they're all uh, nice and black that's good now I'm going to create an Outline. Well, let's create the box first. So I'm just going to create a center point rectangle centered on our center point of the model here. I'm just going to drag that out. Again, we'll worry about the sizes afterwards. You can just plonk it down and then you can get this dimension tool and you can set how wide and deep you want the box. So I think we'll go for, uh, what do we do? Let's try 60. What's that look like? Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll go with 60. And height wise, 29 on it, so let's go with 40. Okay, so this is the outside of the box that we're going to print that the, the board's going to go into. Yeah, and that looks okay. Let's go with that. Doesn't really matter all that much. So now we're going to offset. Um, 
a line around this shape of the circuit board so that that can be the aperture that it's going to sit in yeah I don't want to go straight to this line because 3d printing is not that accurate um, so I need to go a little bit outside of this a little bit bigger and that'll create just enough that way that'll create just enough um, clearance for the, uh, the circuit board to sit in not that big obviously I'm going to change size of it there we go okay um, well in fact I'm going to call yeah I'm going to use I'm going to use our fudge factor uh, right let's think about getting our little kind of arms coming out to, to here basically um, so I'm going to have these arms like tubes uh, if I do a curve so let's just start with a a spline we want a spline from that point to somewhere on there and I'm just going to escape and I'm not create any more points on the spline and then I'm going to I'm going to choose that choose that point and drag it around I want to define where this point's going to be on here how wide is our tube going to be I think about kind of 6 mil yeah 6 mil should be fine so if we we go three mil from the top there so I want this point to be three mil from the end so dimension from that point to that edge I want three mil there we go so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do our offset tool I'm going to offset on that three mil and that creates the one side of our arm if you like and then I'm going to offset the other side 3mm ok so I've got our kind of centre line and our arms are kind of swept up to the, uh, to the point there then I need to just close off the end so that we can actually kind of you need a closed object if you want to uh, to extrude it so there we go just close off the end and you can see it turns grey so it's it's realized that that's an enclosed area now and we can do 3d things with that we can extrude it out um, let me think then that's probably fine I think doesn't really matter I mean you could sit and play with the, uh, the dimensions of this how you wanted it to curve but we're not really all that concerned about, about it that'll do. Um, what I'm going to do is define one side and then I'm going to mirror it onto the other side I think um, because obviously this should be uh, exactly the same dimensions on the other side. Uh, okay, oh wow, what we're going to want to do, we can use that line as the cavity, uh, we can use that to extrude a cavity down the middle that the wire is going to go, but we'll want that wire to kind of root in here somewhere, so the idea is I'm going to print this box in two halves like imagine it's sliced across the middle um, and you, you bring the two pieces together uh, that that's therefore going to need this line continuing just so that the wire can can get in here somehow um, so I can run that into there well actually no I want to put a peg here to uh, let's do those let's do these so um, the it doesn't matter massively where these are but I'm going to put yeah let's have it just parallel to that maybe parallel to that oh that's a good point you can pick up lines here so if you want something parallel to this if you highlight just hover over it and then drag off to it on shape kind of assumes that you want to keep this item you're creating horizontal to it yeah um, and you can see if you pick up another one it will merge the two and it'll say right you want to put something at the uh, the junction of those two lines I take it so you click there bang and we can put a circle there I'm just going to create two what I'm going to do is on one half of the um, model I'm going to create a peg sticking up and on the top half of the model I'm going to create a cavity um, that that peg can slot into um, and the reason being that will just give it some location as the two halves are being brought together so yeah so now I can think about how this wire hole is going to channel so I'm going to put another spline in here 
it's going to start there uh, it's going to maybe come down we want to come to this back corner because that's on the circuit board that's where the LED takeoff is so uh, if I'm going to come to there and then I'm going to come to that bit there I think something, something like that again we can worry about the splines afterwards so this one here we can bring up that should give us enough channel just to run the wires round um, okay um, so I think we're ready to mirror this leg over to the other side <laughs> Right, now we can do a little line that's going to be the clearance wire for the wire on this side. Um, the point, I'm going to put a point here for, the, uh, for where the button is and I've just measured it and it is 6mm from this edge of the circuit board. Put 6 in there and it's 11mm from the top edge of the surface. Uh, the circuit board. So an 11 there. Okay. to do a bit of extruding then to start creating an actual 3d part from this 2d drawing um, so what we're going to do is we've got our sketch this is kind of the the midpoint think of this as the cut line between the top and bottom halves yes yeah? so we want to extrude down from this the uh, the bottom part of the model um, so what I'm going to do is uh, we click this extrude here um, and we want to just extrude the whole bally lot of it like so ka -ching. Um, and you can see here in the extrude tool you can various things you can choose you solid or a surface surface would just be kind of wouldn't really work for this it's a, a hollow kind of object um, whether you're creating a new part or adding to an existing part if one was already there remove will come to in a bit and then the the, the faces of the sketches that you want to extrude out so we've chosen everything. Um, we need to flick it so it's extruding downwards like that and then the thickness of our model um, well I think 12 mil depth should be plenty we'll see as we start taking out material so that's our basic outline and now what we're going to do is going to extrude out so remove uh, clearance for all of these various parts yeah um, these are going to be our pegs, we're going to extrude those up, so we'll come to that in a bit. Um, so yeah, so let's take this take this cavity out then. Uh, what we want to do is we want to click the extrude again. Um, but this time, instead of new, you want remove. Yes, we're removing material. Um, and you can click on the merge scope here and say, well, wh which bit are you removing material from? And you can click on it, so that, that one there, part one as it's called. Um, in fact, let's rename that now while we remember. Um, let me just cancel that. So we've got a part now, we've extruded something, and we can give these a slightly more memorable name. So we could do lower half. So this part is now called lower half. And now if we go back to extrude, remove, merge scope, that one there, lower half, that's what we're taking away from. And you can see on shape prompts you with red. Uh, for bits that need your attention. So it's saying it can't complete this extrude because you've not told it the faces of the sketches that you want to actually remove away. Um, so we click on that bit, turns blue, and we can say, right, take away uh, take away that. Um, so we've taken away a bit too much there. Um, let's try 7mm. Uh, it's looking a bit more like it. So this will be the clearance from top of the PCB 
to the lowest point which is the USB connector which is what did I say 9 mil yeah so we want 9 mil there that will allow the whole thing to sit in there and then we want to create our ledge a little platform that the edges are going to sit on so that's extruding these bits so we can do another extrude again remove remove from that what bits do we want to remove we want to remove our whole edge there and we only want to take a bit of extra in there we'll put two mil just because of 3d printing and all that kind of stuff it's uh, not a precise thing um, rather it was lower than too high and sitting proud so we want those ledges off those ledges that that so there we've taken that edge away leaving some platforms if we click the tick there there we go we can see something that the PCB can sit on good okay now we want to extrude up uh, some pegs <laughs> That's the lower half finished. Now I want to extrude from the same drawing but upwards. And just to simplify matters, I'm going to hide the lower half because it's just going to confuse. So I'm just going to see here we can click the little eyes there and then the lower half disappears. We haven't gotten rid of it, we've just hidden it. So now we're going to extrude upwards the rest of it. Um, so extrude uh, the whole lot. Yeah, let's start with the whole lot. Bang. Okay, so that's uh, apertures for the pegs to go in, and then uh, yeah, we'll just do we'll do the hole for the button while we show you the hole tool. So there's the hole. Click on a point, uh, and well, there you go. <laughs> it's made a hole all the way through the part. Um, Diameter-wise, uh, let's have a look. We certainly don't need it. Oh, oh, actually, you know what? The button's about three mil, isn't it? So make it. Four, make it four and plus a bit of fudge factor let's do let's do four and a half mil there we go okay so now we've got our top uh, I'm going to name that part <coughs> lower half top half and if I reveal the bottom one we should see our two parts of the tracker uh, one good thing that you can do here, which is, you see it's given them different um, colours, so we can kind of easily remember black is the bottom, blue is the top, but you can put transparency on, which I'm going to do on the top half. So if you do uh, edit appearance, you can apply a little bit of transparency here, uh, put 60% transparency maybe, and it just lets you start seeing through it, which is sometimes quite useful if I hide the sketch so it doesn't confuse matters. Uh, you can start visualizing it a little bit better so I'm going to leave that on I think that might be useful so if I come round our part that little point there is going to be the center point of our LEDs yeah um, if I come and zoom into it so I'm going to create a new drawing on this flat face here uh, of circles which are going to be the holes and the um, a slot create a slot that will hold the LEDs in place um, so I'm going to create if you right click on this face see the little orange line there uh, new sketch I'm going to create a new sketch on that face and I'm just going to create some circles one for the you know the actual aperture for the LED to come out via and one that's going to create this kind of lip that will secure it inside this is our hole for the LED. We want that 4 plus 
fudge factor. 4.75. Okay. That's quite a big hole actually, so you know what? I'm going to put another circle that's going to be our wire clearance because we only need oh, 3 mil for the wire. Right, okay. What were we doing with all of this then? Well, now it will become more apparent. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to channel out using this um, sweep tool here. Click on sweep. Uh, Faces and sketch regions you're going to sweep, so we want to sweep that inner circle, okay? And then it's saying, well, what do you want to sweep along? And I say, I want to sweep along that line there. And I want to remove material. Merge scope, what do you want to re remove material from? From both that and that. The top half and the lower half. Look at that. Ain't that cool? There we go we've got a channel for our wire that's running all the way in to the PCB <laughs> there we go okay now I'm gonna remember what I said it hides the sketch when you've done your first extrude so if you want to do further operations on it just uh, unhide it so now we're going to create our opening for the front of the LED but what I want to do is I want to put back in some material uh, for the um, for the lip of the LED. That lip should just stop the LED from falling out forwards. That's my thinking anyway. Let's bring this all back to a uh, normal there we go right now we've got to repeat that the other side So you see we've got our point here, which marked where it's got to be position-wise on the back. So I'm going to create a new sketch on the back, and I'm just going to sketch out the the tail, for want of another phrase. Uh, that's going to come up and hold the point light up above there. So a new sketch on this plane. Uh, let me come around and look at it from the other side. There we go. Okay, so we're in sketch mode. I'm going to create another point. It's going to be up in space up here somewhere. I'm going to constrain it so that it is vertically above that previous point there. And then I'm going to set the distance. So this is where we want our LED to be. Um, what height should we go for? That's 30. Let's go for 40. Yeah, let's do that. So it's curve time again, or spline as they call it. Spline from there to uh, somewhere there.
tail, would it be? Okay, that'll do. Then I'm going to extrude this square. And what I'm going to do is do a, a symmetric um, extrude this time, so it'll go equally either way. This is like a 10mm box on the top of this, so I'll do 10mm wide as well. There we go, that's something just to hold the, uh, the LED in. Then we just want to kind of channel through a hole in the front for the LED, so I'm going to do a new drawing on the front of that. all the way up there and then out for your LED here Got a cable run there for that LED cable run there for that LED right it's just the USB socket then so I'll do that next and I think bar some prettifying which we will do last of all uh, we're almost there so yeah I'm gonna do the USB connector aperture now <laughs> Last step then, this all looks a bit square doesn't it on the edges so nice simple thing we can do is um, I'm going to turn that transparency off now uh, and what I'm going to do is we're going to use this fillet tool here yeah and I'm just going to click around and fillet the top edges. We don't want a 5mm fillet that's a bit generous let's go for 2mm. It's just kind of rounding off top of the uh, top of the part I'm not going to do the underside because this is going to be we're, we're printing flat on this side there we go I think I think we're about there aren't we This is going to be an interesting test of support to print this bit, but um, we'll give it a go. We'll see what it comes out like. There we go. Looks like a scorpion, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, that's enough for this episode then. In the next uh, video, we will start printing this. So we'll go over how the printer works. We'll introduce you to the printer that I use. Um, and we'll kick it off going and do some cool time lapse. and and maybe see if we have to rework the design a little bit. It very rarely does the first print come out ideal, so we might be <laughs> we might need a little bit of rework, but we'll see how it goes. Till next time. See you later.